Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Terry Grossman to the show today. He is the co-author of two blockbuster books, Transcend, the new one, Nine Steps to Living Well Forever, by him and Ray Kurzweil, and also Fantastic Voyage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you all know if you've been listening to the show how committed I am to anti-aging and living well. We've done so many different shows, but you really need to listen today to Dr. Terry Grossman. This book really talks about the nine steps to living well forever. We're going to talk about those nine steps, but you're going to hear some breakthrough scientific discoveries. We're going to talk about the three bridges to prevention and early detection of disease, three bridges to radical life extension. We're going to talk about inflammation, how we create our own brains, and completely new knowledge about how heart attacks really happen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome our guest, Dr. Terry Grossman, to the show today. Good morning. Morning. You are the director of the Grossman Wellness Center in Denver and internationally sought-out expert and practitioner in longevity medicine. And in reading this book, Transcend, these bridges to radical life extension are really not part of what people know around the world. People know to take supplements. People know to eat better, to exercise. But this book seems to put it all together. How long did it take you to write this? Well, uh, I've written uh, three books on anti-aging and life extension. And this is the third in the series. And this one uh, took about a year to write, and I wrote it with uh, my co-author, Ray Kurzweil, who is a well-known futurist and uh, entrepreneur and scientist. Indeed. In fact, I would like to start, if that's okay with you, by contextualizing this dialogue we're going to have today, which is that Ray calls the law of accelerating returns a doubling of capability each year, which means the ability to understand, model, simulate, and reprogram the information processes underlying disease and aging processes will be a thousand times more powerful in one decade and a million times more powerful in two decades. And according to his models, he says we're shrinking technology at an exponential pace by about a hundredfold per decade, and these technologies will be 10,000 times smaller just 20 years from now. Isn't this what Transcend begins with? Yes, the idea is uh, behind uh, Transcend, it's uh, nine steps to living well forever, that we have technologies today that can help us to live longer than people who came before us. In fact, uh, right now we're adding about five to six hours to our estimated life expectancy every day that we're alive. And if that increases to 24 hours per day, That means that the the end point of our lives, our projected lifespan, the horizon will be constantly moving. And it is uh, certainly a possibility that many people now alive will live to, to experience that radical increase in human longevity. The thing I loved about your book is that it bridged totally new knowledge for detection and preventing diseases and catching them early and made it real and available to us and also highlighted heart attacks and cancer is totally preventable. Can you talk about how heart attacks are preventable in this new knowledge we have to detect them early? Uh, absolutely. Uh, with heart disease, the, which is heart attacks right now, the, the leading cause of death uh, in the United States and many parts of the developed world. And if you take heart attacks and cancer together, uh, they constitute more than 50% of all deaths. With, with heart disease, people discover they have heart disease in one of three ways. <clears throat> they, have a, 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 they develop chest pain. They get symptoms. Uh, they're carrying something heavy up the stairs. They get some uh, chest discomfort. Uh, they're able to go to a physician and be diagnosed uh, and treated before any serious heart damage in the form of a heart attack occurs. Unfortunately, that's the minority of patients. Only one out of three people is lucky enough to have that type of, of presentation, that manifestation disease. The other two out of three people discover they have heart disease by suffering a sudden heart attack. And of those two-thirds, 
that have uh, discover they have heart disease by having a heart attack, half of them die that just immediately. So essentially, heart disease manifests in one of three ways. One third of people develop symptoms, chest pain, they can be treated. One third of people have a heart attack that they survive. And one third of people have a heart attack that proves fatal. So uh, if we were able to discover that we have buildup of the cholesterol plaque within our heart arteries, which is uh, the cause that leads to heart attacks, if we can discover that we have this buildup early, then we can take preventive action to reverse that plaque, to stabilize that plaque so that we don't go on to have a heart attack. And we can do that with the use of two tests that I talk about in Transcend. One of these tests is called the coronary artery calcium score. And it's done with a CAT scan machine. It's a very simple test. It takes less than five minutes. In many areas of the country, it costs between $150 and $200. Uh, So it's inexpensive, fast, safe, painless. And people will discover if they have any buildup of this uh, plaque within their coronary arteries. And if they do, they can then take aggressive action to stabilize it so that they don't go on and become one of these statistics. The second test that I recommend is what's called advanced lipid testing. Most patients, most people have have had health fair screening and screening through their conventional uh, physicians where they measure things like cholesterol and HDL, which is the good cholesterol, LDL is the bad cholesterol, et cetera. But we now have the ability to, to dig a lot deeper and to look and see, is it uh, the good type of HDL or is it the indifferent type of HDL? Is it the bad type of LDL? LDL is the cholesterol that typically deposits in the arteries. Do we have the type that, that tends to build up? And there's also a type of LDL that's not so, not so dangerous. So by digging deeper, by looking at other, other markers like homocysteine and C-reactive protein, which is a measure of inflammation, we can determine if people are at risk and what steps they can take. So with these two tests, which both can be done for in the neighborhood of $300 or so, uh, people can find out what their risk is of developing uh, heart disease, and that's the number one cause of death. So that would have a tremendous impact uh, on our potential longevity. Dr. Grossman, do you feel that most doctors will order these tests or who have kept up enough to order these type of tests for people at certain ages or at certain times? Are these tests well known to them? They're becoming better known. Uh, When I began doing this type of longevity and anti-aging medicine uh, in the late 1990s, both of these tests were available. So we've been uh, utilizing uh, certainly the ultra-fast CAT scans and these advanced lipid testing. The ultra-fast CAT scans, the coronary artery tests, have been available for over 15 years. Um, But conventional doctors are only now beginning to use them. And more and more cardiologists and other physicians are, are adding these to their, to their diagnostic testing. With the advanced lipid testing that they're able to do, uh, these have been available for about 10 years. Uh, cardiologists seem to be ordering these uh, more widely, uh, so I'm beginning to see these more. The coronary artery calcium test is still, when I give a, a lecture, I'll often ask the, uh, the audience to raise their hands if they had this test done, because I think it's important that people have a test done that's uh, inexpensive and can diagnose a heart disease early, Uh, yet very rare is more than one hand in 10 go up in the audience when I ask it. So it's still not common knowledge, unfortunately. How often do you recommend that people get the test? Well, for most people um, who don't have a strong uh, family history of heart disease, I feel that, that men can get their initial screening at age 45 and women at 50. If uh, people do have heart attacks in their family, uh, particularly at young ages, uh, I like to push that up uh, by five years so that men could start the screening at 40 and women at 45. Then depending on what the test shows, uh, we can determine should the test be done in two years or should the test be repeated in five years. I don't like to do these tests that often. Uh, I like to do it as an initial screening uh, just to see where we're at Uh, to get an idea of how aggressively to manage patients. But it is a CAT scan. It does use radiation. It's equal to about 10 chest X-rays. So we don't want to do it uh, every six months or every year. 